We've heard a lot of Philadelphia and Boston uh, connect it, and uh, a lot of people we have voting over at uh, 97.3 ESPN on Twitter. Uh, a lot of people think the Sixers like Chris Dunn. Boston wants to get out. And uh, A. Sherrod Bakley here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN joins us from Boston with a look at exactly uh, that possibility. He covers the Celtics uh, for Comcast Sportsnet, PT. Your brother and up there. He's in nice. uh, New England. Part and uh, A. Sherrod Blakely here on the Bash. How are you, sir? I am wonderful. How are you guys doing? We are doing well. Our head is spinning, though. I mean, here in Philly the last Join three the years, the Sixers, the, <laughs> the Sixers have been kind of an irrelevant mess when it comes to on the floor. But off the floor, they are full of intrigue and stories. And now, with the Celtics getting involved, how realistic, it sounds like it makes sense, but how realistic the stuff we hear this week, how much, should we ta- how much stock should we take? Well, I think what we're seeing now between Boston and Philly really is a game of chicken. You know, I mean, the Celtics... They know that the Sixers have to do something in that front court and get rid of somebody. When you talk about adding Ben Simmons to an already you know stacked front court with Jalil and and, and Nerland and Sarich and, and Joel Embiid, someone's got to go. And so the Celtics don't want to give up much to, to get one of those guys, Nerland and and Okafor, the two we're talking about specifically. Meanwhile, the Sixers are saying, "Hey, you want one of our guys." And for that number three pick, we're going to want a little bit more than that because those guys would be the number three pick in this year's draft. So, so what are we getting above and beyond a minimum in this deal? Someone's got to blink. Um, now, I think ultimately what's going to happen, both sides will blink and just walk away. The Celtics, I think, will wind up keeping that number three pick and using it, and the Sixers will look to address their point guard needs either later in, in the draft or potentially you know, this summer through free agency. Who has the leverage in this deal? It seems like some people think the Sixers have no leverage because they have the surplus. Others would say, guess what, Boston? You don't have leverage because you don't have a guy that can put the ball in the basket. So guess what? Come to us. Who has the leverage for you? Neither side has leverage because because here's the thing. The the Celtics right now are are good enough to be a a playoff team, and I'm not sure they believe that adding an Okafor or adding Nerlens will put them over the top or put them a, a significant step closer to being an elite team. And so for them, they their leverage they're pretty they're okay walking away from this. They're still going to be a pretty good team. I think the Sixers, it's much more imperative on them to really try and do something to add a legitimate point guard that can kind of grow with this franchise because look, they got a lot of young pieces, but they don't have that one guy that can kind of bring it all together. I think for them, it's much more important and much more imperative for them to find a way to add another talented young player, particularly at that point guard position. So I guess when I think about it, I still think the Celtics might have a little bit more leverage because they their needs aren't quite as great as, as the Sixers' needs are in terms of you know improving your lot from where you are right now. You think there's a guy at three that's a bigger impact than Jaleel Okafor or Nerlens Noel? And, and let me ask you, Sherrod, which guy do you think Boston covets more, Noel or Okafor? I think I think well, and here's the, and the reason why I think right now Okafor is a better scorer. But if you're talking about all around game, Nerlens has the kind of game that even on bad nights when he's not delivering offensively, which as you guys know that happens a lot, he's still able to impact games with his defense, his athleticism, his ability to alter shots. He's a rim protector. If Okafor isn't scoring, he's really not going to give you much more uh, when he's on the floor. And when you look at the way the NBA is changing, everyone wants to stretch big, a guy that can is 6'10", six, 6'11", six, who can shoot threes. And let's face it, Okafor is a good player but that's not part of his game. When you look at the way the Celtics play and the type of guys that have thrived in Brad Stevens' system, they thrive with guys who are versatile, guys who can play multiple positions, can do multiple things out there at both ends of the floor. Nerlens is a better fit in that regard than Okafor. But listen, if you're the Celtics, if all it's going to cost you is the number three pick and you're not in love with any of the guys that you've worked out and you can get a guy like Okafor, you'll take him. But if you need to give up more than just that number three pick, that's when you you might want to pump the brakes a little bit. So, in your opinion, is there a guy that has more impact at number three than either of the Sixers players, Noel or Okafor? I think based on the way their roster, Chris Dunn could come in and I think help them much more. Not much more. He can help them more than Okafor could. And the reason why I say that is because you don't really have a playmaker, per se. And the one thing that Chris Dunn does, in, in addition to making plays, he's a really, really good defender. 6'4", with a 6'9", wingspan. And when you look at what this Sixers team, I think, can do, 
you don't have a guy with that kind of athleticism at the point. You don't have a guy that can really be that kind of a difference maker. I think at this point, Okafor is a better player, but I think if we're talking two, three, four years down the road and Dunn is with the Sixers, I think he will be the better fit and help this team really get back into the thick of things to become a playoff contender. We saw Brian Colangelo down here uh, went on camera yesterday and talked to Porters yesterday about wanting to move up into the top five for the uh, maybe that three pick or kind of hinting at that. What's Danny Ainge saying, the, his Boston counterpart? Danny's been pretty tight-lipped, but, he, but listen, the one thing he's made clear throughout this draft process is that they're open to anything and everything. They're not holding – every player – is available every pick is available it all comes down to how much is it going to cost us to get where we want to get to and that's where things get a little bit tricky with that number three pick because when i talk to other teams throughout the league who've had conversations about danny danny is trying to use that pick to get an absolute high impact difference maker uh we're talking about trying to use it to get a guy like jimmy butler a guy like gordon hayward uh those type of guys who are either all-stars or have been in the league long enough to where when you talk about them, you talk about them in all-star caliber terms. Okafor, very good player, but I'm not. I don't think anyone uh, believes he's that close to being an all-star. Very good player, but not quite all-star caliber yet. Uh, and that's why, frankly, for the Celtics, I don't think they'll have a problem walking away from this deal because, again, this is a guy that they see as a very good player, but he's not the difference maker that they're they're seeking. They're big game hunting, and he is, you know. He's not the biggest game out there that they're looking to, to nail down. A. Shrod Blakely covers the Celtics for Comcast Sportsnet. Well, I don't know uh, how accurate some of these reports are, but it sounds like they have tried to get bigger name guys and have been turned away by just about every team in the league. Uh, it doesn't seem that that number three pick has a lot of uh, shine on it right now. No, and it, it, it's it's sad. It's kind of like that 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 salesman that's just hitting up everybody on the block and just like, no thanks, no thanks, no thanks. Keep moving, and that's kind of what it's been like for the Celtics. And the problem for them is that in order to get the guys that they really, really want, the guys like Jimmy Butler and Gordon Hayward, you're going to have to include that three, but you're also going to have to include players, and that's where it gets problematic for them because. Unlike back in 07 when you had a guy like Al Jefferson who had played enough games, had been in the league enough seasons to where you could see he was going to be trending toward being a borderline all-star, all-star player, they don't have anyone like that other than Isaiah Thomas. And no one is itching to get him because, frankly, the Celtics aren't making him available. So if you are another team and they're trying to talk to you about giving up Gordon Hayward and you look at that roster, would you talk to them? I wouldn't. And if you're talking about Jimmy Butler, you're going to – again – I wouldn't talk to him about Jimmy Butler either, no matter how you know how much friction there is between him and Hoiberg. Uh, so the, the Celtics, they're in a tough jam. Uh, I, I think their best bet is just taking the best player that they believe uh, that they can flip at number three and hope and hope that either you, you use that player to help you get you know an Okafor or someone that's maybe not All Star caliber, but certainly a really good player that can maybe move the needle a little bit. Uh, and and that to me, that's their best course of action at this point. If you can't use that pick as a package to get an All Star, so if they stay at three, if they take the pick tomorrow night, who do they take at three? In your opinion, I think it's going to be either Jalen Brown of Cal, who I'm I'm not thrilled about that pick, but I think that's a guy that they they like a lot. They brought him in for a couple workouts, and their track record the last couple of years, typically when they bring a guy in for a second workout. Uh, that guy is, is very much in their radar, in their scope as a, as a player that they're interested in, either him or Dragon Bender. Uh, Bender is a guy on, on paper projects to be a very good player. Uh, a lot of people like to compare him to Porzingis just because that's the player overseas that comes immediately to mind. But his idol is Tony Kukos. And the way, just when I talk to scouts who've seen him play, uh, and it, he hasn't played a lot of games, that seems to be the player that he tried to mimic his game after. And if you're talking about a 19-year-old uh, Tony Kukoc wannabe, um, that's, that's appealing because Tony was a heck of a player. But uh, aside from that, you look at Buddy Hill, he, you know, that's a guy that you've heard his name out there. I don't think he's in the mix. Uh, Marquise Chris, I think he is in the mix. And uh, he is a tremendous, tremendous talent, but I'm, I'm sure – if his head's on straight as far as being a guy that can really move the needle for them. But the bottom line for the Celtics is they need to make a smart decision. They have to get this right. Whether this guy is a star from day one or it takes him a year or two, they need to make a home run with this number three pick and get a player that is someone that we're going to be talking about in four or five years as a potential all-star or has already established themselves as one. So if they take Chris Dunn at three, does that indicate a trade coming? 
It, I, I think so. I can't see why they would take him at three and plan to keep the rest of the core. Either they're trading Dunn or they're trading an Avery Bradley, a Marcus Smart, you know, an Isaiah Thomas. One of those, someone's moving. I mean, listen, if Chris Dunn is coming in the house, that means somebody is getting kicked out, uh, plain and simple. There's no way in the world that they're going to bring him in and try to keep this core group together because they already have too many guards as it is. You're not going to add another one to the mix unless you're planning to kick somebody out or you're planning to move Chris. All right, uh, H. Rod Blakely with the uh, CSN uh, New England covers the Celtics as they own that number three pick, and uh, we'll see. Tomorrow night should be very interesting, and yes, I kind of agree will. with you. If Dunn is taken there, we might get some news shortly thereafter. H. Rod, thank you so much, pal. No problem. Take care, guys.